Hello and welcome to vlog number 8. Over the past 20 years, the methods I have used to create my models have continually evolved right through to the present day with 3D printing. In this episode, I'll be showing you some of the highs and lows of the latest technology and where I am with the Sherman. As you know, the next release will be the M4A3E2 Sherman in 1-48 scale, specifically Cobra King. This is probably the most famous of all Shermans. Cobra King took part in the Battle of the Bulge and was the first tank to break through the Siege of Bastogne on December 26, 1944. Remarkably, Cobra King survives today. You can read more about the fascinating history of this extraordinary tank on my website. Just click on the link in the description. As with any project, I start with the best source material I can find. While there are plenty of good books on German armour, books on Allied fighting vehicles are a bit thin on the ground. These two seem to have the bases covered on the Sherman though. The RP Honeycutt book is a bit of a brick. It covers just about everything to do with the design and development of the Sherman. Pretty much any prototype and variant you can imagine is well documented. The second book goes into much more detail, right down to the casting codes on the hull and turret. It also features lots of in-service photos. I never realised there were so many Sherman variants. The Sherman certainly is a very complex subject to understand and model accurately. I have carefully recreated the Sherman in my CAD software trying to add as much detail as possible. These are 3D rendered images of the computer model. They give me a good idea of how the final model will look. For some time now I've been using an Ultimaker 2 3D printer to print out the masters for my models. This has worked with varying success. Let me explain. The Ultimaker 2 is an FDM printer. It's a very good FDM printer with a good build volume and can reliably print detailed objects but it has its limitations. Like all 3D printers, it prints the parts in layers, one on top of the other. The principle is pretty simple. The plastic is fed from a spool through a heated nozzle, which moves across a build plate, depositing the material one layer at a time. Highly detailed objects can be printed with a small nozzle and a small layer height. If the object being printed has overhangs, then additional support material has to be printed. This is automatically created by the software. Here's a screenshot of the Sherman turret. The pale blue areas are the support structure for the overhangs. I print everything in ABS. Other plastics such as PLA and nylon are also available. ABS is one of the more difficult plastics to print. It requires a heated build plate and a stable environment. I use ABS as it's not only easy to work with, but it softens at a relatively high temperature. This just about allows me to use it to make vulcanised silicon moulds for production. As you saw in Vlog 7, the ABS masters don't fare well during the vulcanisation process. The destruction of the masters is something I'm not happy about, as it makes it impossible to remake a mould without starting all over again. So, let's have a look at the 3D printed parts for the Sherman. These were printed on the Ultimaker with the 0.25mm nozzle and a 0.06mm layer height. You can see all the support material on the upper hull quite clearly here. It's fairly easy to remove. Initially I printed the tracks and bogey units separately to try and make a better quality master. The bogies had quite a bit of support material to dig out but came out well. After a bit of redesigning, I found a better solution and reprinted the tracks and bogies as one unit. The level of detail is good, but I was hoping for better. Here you can see the turret print. This looks pretty good. Some of the detail parts have come out well, others like the rear section are disappointing. 
This is all to do with the heat build-up in the part, affecting the cooling of the print. It affects all the parts to some degree. So, I've started looking around for another 3D printer. The plan is to find a printer to print small parts well, and I think I may have found a solution. This is a DLP 3D printer, which uses light to cure resin in layers. It is already proven in industry, and is capable of printing in a resin that will withstand my vulcanizing process. Here's an explanation of how it works. The resin is held in a vat with a clear floor, below which is a light source that cures only a very thin layer of resin at a time. The build plate lifts out of the resin one layer at a time. This is effectively a digital process, and results in a very high level of detail, but can be messy. I expect you'd like to see a sample. Well, check this out. This was printed on the 3D printer I'm planning to buy. The steel block the ring is standing on is 20 mm square. That's just over 3 quarters of an inch. The level of detail is astonishing. You can see the support structure is minimal, and the surface finish is near flawless. The resin used here will withstand the vulcanizing process. This should solve most of my problems. I'm planning to use this new 3D printer to reprint the Sherman, perfectly recreating all the detail I added during the 3D modeling. I hope you enjoyed my vlog and subscribe to my channel so you can catch the next episode to see how I get on with the new 3D printer and how I make progress on the Sherman. Thanks for watching.